right, this is probably a long response video to Laura Layla, who's made a 12-minute video, just about 12 minutes. Um, I mean, just asking, I mean, I, I played two minutes of the video, and I'm just like, what are you doing asking these questions? Why, why are, it just doesn't make any sense. I mean, I've made thousands of videos, and I've put questions to people, thought experiments to people, and, you know, what, 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 uh, what else needs to be explained from our point of view? What you're not providing is the rational explanation for what purpose is accomplished through perpetuation of the sentient existence. Uh, you know, what purpose beyond what the non-existent Martians are doing? Okay, this is a follow-up to the video I made on the right to die, and um, it's... You know, you're going you're gonna to combine these two subjects, which you really probably shouldn't do. I mean, it's quite obvious that people, the right to die and antinatalism are going to be associated, but they're both negative assessments of the life game. Okay, one in a personal level, one on a the whole game level. Um, right? I mean, you know, some people can want to commit suicide and just say, no, I think life is cool, it just isn't working for me. So, I want to get out of here. Um, you know, and it can be completely circumstantial. They can think life kicks ass, they just don't want to waste suffering. They just don't want to spend the, they just don't want to die in a sloppy way. They're just saying, hey, life is really cool, but why do this death thing in a sloppy manner? Why not just die when it's time to die? It's not that complicated. Some thoughts and questions for um, those who want to die, but... Yeah, well, thoughts and questions, great. I'll answer your, your questions, okay? But, I mean, we've asked questions. Why don't you be answering my questions? All right, I mean, I can give you the thought experiment quickly again. Okay, Frankenstein Castle, it produces monsters. Uh, nine out of ten of the monsters go out the front door skipping, I love Jesus, or some other kind of bullshit, and they think life is just charming. They have some kind of Gaia theory, or they have an intuition theory, no offense. Some kind of bullshit theory. They, they play the little hopscotchy game. They think they're accomplishing something. They get all gooey when American Idol comes on, and blah, blah, blah. All right, fine. Out the back door tumbles the defects, the ones that say, what the fuck am I doing here? This place sucks. This whole thing smells like shit. Um, it's a fucking goddamn slaughterhouse. What the fuck am I doing here? All right, so they collect down there in the gutter, out the back door, and they say, uh, what are we going to do about this, guys? I mean, yeah, we can just kill ourselves. Right? We can off ourselves in some kind of crude manner because the skippy little dopey jackasses won't let us use medical technology for our own um, comfort and, and uh, uh, invest our own welfare in our own judgment. These motherfuckers won't even let us do that. They won't even let us kill ourselves. They'll fucking don't ask us permission to give birth to us. And on top of that, they won't even let us have permission to kill ourselves, the motherfucking cunts. Um, and then they're going to call us the imposers. Yeah, you know, so what, what did the monsters do? What's the rational thing to do? I think the rational thing to do is go up to Dr. Frankenstein and say, You have a permit. Do you have a permit to do this shit? What's your big, what's your vision here, fuckwit? What's the master fucking plan? Because if you don't have one, you know what? I think we're going to burn your fucking castle down. Uh, are not dying, if you see what I'm saying. Um or who don't have some appalling condition that makes physical condition. Yeah, so it's so appalling by what? Your standards, right? And so we'll have to go get a, a, an approved appalling, or appalling complaint has to be approved by somebody. I, I mean, I think it's appalling, okay? What's going on out there every fucking goddamn day? I think it's appalling that right now, literally, billions of mammals are going to die right today, today alone, in some horrid manner with blood gushing and heartbeats fluttering and all that shit. I don't think that's appalling enough. And I haven't even gotten to like World War One. That makes life impossible. I know you can have mental conditions that do that, but th there are different um, difficulties 
as a result of, of each. <clears throat> yeah, whatever. I don't think we have any evidence of what the right state of mind is. We're, we're, we're you know, we're, we're, you're basically on a boat, okay? And this boat has got shit in it. It's heading for icebergs. It's sloppy, rickety piece of shit. And your society is basically saying, if you're complaining, you are sick. I think the standard for sickness is broken. I think your standard is shit, to tell you the truth. I think you're the sickos, frankly. Okay? Comfy chair, relaxed, uh, who, man, whatever, blah, 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 this whatever spectator bullshit, this life journey bullshit. Um, yeah, I think you're the sickos. Um, one of the things that uh, I find a little bit difficult or confusing is is the, the tendency, or apparent tendency at least from where I'm looking, which doesn't necessarily mean it's correct, to be uh, perceiving um, all these, a certain series, a great series of things to be all one thing. Um, in other words, you know, you've got antinatalism, which is theoretically... Um, well, I mean, who has this whole one thing problem? I don't see that on my side. I don't, I'm not, I don't have any all one thing problem, I don't think. I, I think I have a capacity to separate the subjects, and I have separated them. So, what is this about? You, one doesn't want to have children um, through ethanism. No. It's not about I don't want to have children. That's not ethylism. Ethylism isn't I don't personally like babies, and so I will not have babies. It's not ethylism. All right? I mean, really, those videos are explicit. It's, an, it's a description of the entire frickin' game. I didn't get here because I committed a, a crime, because I did something stupid. I got here because somebody else did something stupid. And to prevent it from perpetuating from happening over and over and over and over again. You have to do something. You have to change something to prevent something. Right? <laughs> so, and I can't change anything I did. I didn't make the mistake. Someone else is making the mistake. You get me? I mean, this is one of those all or nothing kind of things. It's either you have nuclear power plants or you don't have nuclear power plants. Now, I mean, the, you, you can't you can't just say, well, the people who want them can have them, and the people who don't want them don't have to have them. Well, that just means that the people who don't want them are still stuck with the risk. You get it? I can't win, and you can't win. It can't go both ways. We don't both get to win. All right? My only way to win is to stop you fuckers. And that's, so that's what I'm going to goddamn try to do. The that you want out of the planet, oh, that's how it seems to me, or um, just the right to die because you're unhappy. Um, and so sometimes that becomes... Yeah, well, even the way you said that, because you're unhappy, I mean, just it just trivializes um, what, what can be chronic problems. Um, and again, I would argue, just like with parenthood, if you're, if you're a happy parent, I'm going to argue you're doing it wrong because it's such a huge responsibility. And I'm going to argue, if, there, if you're going to call yourself happy on this planet with the conditions that exist on this planet, that means you have to say, I'm happy, even though capitalism has many billions of people in slavery, has people living in, in absolute shit. There, there, people are dying for 58 goddamn cents in this planet, and other people are wasting, you know, 58 cents to... I, I can't think of something, you know, on, on, uh, on gold-plated toilet paper. And you're going to argue to me that there's some reason for somebody to be happy or to call themselves happy. And, but if I don't say I'm happy, then all of a sudden I'm some sort of um, whiny, complainy shithead. I mean, this, you, you know, there's just no way to win with you people. Just absolutely none. There's plenty on this goddamn planet to not be happy about. As those all get tangled up, and because um, there seems, again, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm correct, I'm just saying... Well, whatever, yeah, like I said, these qu this questions of entanglement aren't that difficult to untangle, okay? You go to a web, you go to a, a YouTube channel that says Graceful Exit, and you go to one that says Ephilism. 
two different channels, two different approaches to the problem. Really don't have to combine it. And I'm saying that it doesn't really matter if you do associate the two because they're both negative assessments of life. And um, so, and they're both um, basically making the point that it is you pro creationists, you God players, who are the ones who are interfering, not only in a right to, as to a personal autonomy and a right to choose not to live, but in the fact that you will impose the creation and you will not get consent before you do that. It's perception to be the desire from people who have this kind of philosophy to assume that we should all feel that way. <clears throat> Well, assume that you should all feel that way. I mean, it's a logical fucking argument. I mean, it's, I'm not asking you to feel a certain way. I'm asking you to give me a logical argument why it is wrong to look at this game and say, okay, it's a DNA molecule replicating itself. I don't want to repeat my aphorism videos, but they're spelled out that we are machines designed to be carnage machines. It's a gladiator war. There is nothing to win except to say, I win. That's it. All right, so it's war for the sake of the winner saying, I win. There's nothing else happening here. The war isn't to save the Jews. The war isn't to do stop the Nazis from controlling all of Europe. There's no fucking other thing that's happening in this war except one guy says, I win, and all the others say, I'm bleeding to death and now dying. That's the fucking game that we're part of, um, in short, in brief. Now, do you have a counter-argument saying how life is doing something else? A rational counter-argument, one not made out of special energy or unicorn piss? We should all, you know, the only valid way of going about things and the only valid philosophy is that all life should end. None of well, I'm sorry. I mean, it either is a potato or it is a tomato or it is a fucking stalk of celery. I mean... Describe, you're, you're saying you don't understand. We have explained it upside down, right side up, left, right, all the fucking ways it can be explained what this is. And you keep saying, no, it's something else, I think. It's something more somehow. Well, that's not anything I can do anything with. What the fuck do I rationally do with that? And so you're saying I'm some sort of asshole because I won't just placate your bibble babble. I mean, you might as well just say, well, you, you have to listen to the, the, the God bothers. I have to listen to their silly stories. They can rewrite one tomorrow, and I have to listen to it. Why do I have to listen to it? Why do I have to pay any attention to it all? None of this has any credibility. None of this has any rational sense. This is all made-up crap. So you have some made-up crap version of what reality is. Well, good for you, but I'm not. I, the fact that I don't accept it is good on me. If I sat there and listened to it, I'd be bad on me. We should have children, and we should all want to die. And well, whatever. No one's saying you should want to die. So that is absolutely a fucking lie. That's just a lie. So now you just turned yourself into a liar. Who has said everybody should want to die? Who the fuck has said that? Who? Name me one fucking person who has said everybody should want to die. I mean, man, that's just so fucking, you're going to get yourself into this subject and you're going to get in on an on a, on a argument like that? That's how you're going to paraphrase um, the other side? I, I mean, that's just fucking rude. And, and that, you know, is unrealistic. Um, having a philosophy... Oh, it's unrealistic. By who else? This is go so says the who? Miss Realism? Miss I've Got the Truth? <laughs> Sorry, no sale. Prove it's unrealistic. Give me a fucking argument. Well, everybody thinks it is. Well, that isn't even true, because as I keep pointing out, most people, if we went with the birth rate of most people, the human race would go extinct. That's a fact. Most people are underpopulating planet Earth. The, that you apply to yourself because it is applicable and that others apply to themselves and join you because it is also applicable to them. Fine. I don't have any issue with whatsoever. 
Yeah, well, the subject isn't about what... It's like this is the argument, okay? We're making a statement about the game, all right? I'm not making a statement about my life or about your life. I'm making a statement about the game. So it's sort of like I'm saying, um, yeah, even if rape was legal, I wouldn't rape women, okay? But regardless, I can still see that raping is wrong. So this is a thing that's wrong when somebody else does it. It's not just wrong when I do it, it's wrong when anybody does it. So I'm going to say it's wrong. It would be stupid for me not to say it's wrong because I think it's fucking wrong. But when you cannot, or, or it appears you cannot engage fully um, in that, in discussion with people of who are doing that. Uh, yeah, well, what is the nature of discussion anyway? I mean, I mean, this, this subtle word, you use discussion versus argument versus debate versus blah, 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 blah. The point is, is that there have been thousands of videos made by me and others making these arguments over and over and over, and there has been no counter-argument. Nobody answers these questions, these simple, basic questions asked. How many people have to die in World War III horribly? Slow, radiation sickness, really bad shit, horror, horror, horror. How many have to die in World War III, and then you'll raise your hand and say, no, Moss, you're right. This life game is too fucking stupid. How many? Because if you don't see it the way they see it, there is something wrong with you. That... It's a logical argument. I mean, I can't... It's wrong with you. No, there's something wrong with your argument. Who's saying there's something wrong with you? Okay? I mean, obviously, if you have a false uh, understanding of the world, then it's false. I mean, I can't, I can't fix that for you. There's people, you're not telling me there aren't people that have wacky religious beliefs and you think they're, they're fucking wrong and they're wrong, they're fucked entirely, their whole life is fucked because of that stupid belief? It kind of makes it difficult and I suspect also it doesn't do the cause, your cause, any good. Uh, yeah, whatever. The, the cause isn't my cause. The cause is the cause of all people who advocate for victims, ones who are getting fucked by you people, by your lack of thoughtfulness and consideration, your inability to justify anything but your own selfishness. You don't have anything besides selfish desire saying what you're accomplishing or your personal private notions of accomplishment. But you have no articulated, rational mission for the human race. There is nothing for it to do. Everything that we value in our lives is built out of s preventing something from having harm affect it or providing it comfort in some way or another. Everything we do that we value has comfort tied to it. We give people vacations because it's comforting to them. We give them medical care because it's comforting to them. These things have value because they provide comfort. We can comfort nothing for the universe. The universe is not in pain. It is not in a prison. It does not need us to rescue it. There is no, we have no purpose to serve. And all we are doing is creating a mess, cleaning up a percentage of it, and then giving us a, 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 a trophy and saying how wonderful we are. I mean, it's absolutely preposterous. You're all cat in the hat morons. You go into somebody's house, make a preposterous mess, create a junk of chaos, and unlike the cat in the hat, you clean up, you only clean up 20% of it, and then you say, how do you do? I mean, it's just bullshit. This is, it's failure. And, and, um, um, so what's your counter-argument to that simple metaphor describing the human condition, describing the sentient condition? We create needs. We generate them. The need, the needs do not need to exist. Um, so, so if anyone can explain to me why it, it, I know it's very difficult when you're inside something to see what it looks like from the outside, but certainly from my outside, that's what it looks like. Um, yeah, well, whatever. Yeah, you're not saying anything. Explain to you what? 3,000 videos, and you want somebody to explain something to you. <laughs> I mean, I call bullshit. If you can explain why you feel the need to present it in that particular way, that it is the only valid way to perceive things. Well, there's one fucking reality on Earth, okay? The universe is made out of matter and energy. It has one form, it has one origin, it's a cause and effect deterministic universe. 
I mean, you want to pretend it's something else? Fine. You want to pretend there's dual realities, that conflicting descriptions of reality can both be right? Go ahead and believe that crap. But it makes no logical sense to me. I can't. Ha how do I have a conversation using that kind of vocabulary? There's no starting point. Your starting point is is that this is not a battery. This is not blue. This is not what it is. It's something else. That somebody can have a conflicting description of this. Call it something else. Say its nature is something else. Describe it as a different color, and somehow those descriptions are compatible. They're not compatible. Um, but also, as I've said to Heroin Church, or asked Heroin Church on, on his video response to me, you know, I can fully understand people who are terminally ill wanting um, or needing help from others to end their lives, because, you know, more often than not, they're not able to. I can also understand that with people who have very debilitating conditions of one sort or another, but who aren't necessarily dying, who want um, both the wherewithal and the support to achieve that, because they cannot achieve Well, they can, but the point is, is yeah, no, just like you don't want to have surgery without uh, 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 an anesthesiologist, why should somebody have to kill themselves with crude methods? Exactly. They want the technology. So it's not that they can't do it personally, it's that they're not allowed to do it personally. Alone. Um, and I mean, that's one step down the, the road, isn't it? And, and they s struggle. You know, people are um, incredibly judgmental about that, that, a lot of those people who want to do that and how wrong it, it is. Um, and then you have people like you, Heroin Church, who want to die but are physically able and physically capable, if you so chose, to buy black market drugs. I mean, you get pretty much every drug online. Well, again, why should somebody have to do it illegally? All right, there's all this controversy. I mean, gay people can obviously have unions that don't have to be sanctioned by society, and they don't have to be this, and they don't have to be that, and they don't have to have their Social Security, and they don't have to have their visitation rights, and they don't have to have all these other stuff. So why don't they just do it? Because they don't like the, the, the stigma of it. They want the fucking respect is what they want. Um, and um, that's a big fucking part of it. All right? I don't do things in the black market. I'm not a cheater and a thief. I'm not a criminal, and I'm not going to be made a criminal by fucktards who say they have a right to tell me what my existence means, that they have a right to tell me what I'm going to do with my body, okay? Not about what I'm going to roll dice with some new creation, these arrogant fucks. They'll roll dice with somebody else's goddamn fate, and yet these arrogant fucks will think they I'm their property? Fuck that. Um, and do it. Just do it quietly. Um, I know that, you know, yes, it, perhaps it would be preferable for you to be able to go to the doctor and say, I've had enough. Yeah, it would be preferable to do it right. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, the most important event in your life, and you should have the right to do it right. I mean, you're, you're basically saying, well, look, you could make a condom out of, like, you know, go find a dead cat on the road and, like, you know, pull out some of its intestines, and maybe you can make a condom out of that. Yeah. That'll be okay. So if you really want to have sex, why don't you use a dead cat condom? Why the fuck should anybody have to do that? Why should they have to compromise because some fucking religious jackass is going to tell them their God says it doesn't like your attitude? Fuck that. And fuck your patronizing attitude. Um, like, like you can't understand why people, the most important event in their life that they actually have control over, they didn't have control over their goddamn birth, and the fact is, I want every ounce of control over my goddamn death. That is mine. And I'm not going to do it some shitty way because you say so. I'm going to fight for a better way. Though, that said, I think it is highly unlikely that certainly for the foreseeable future, or, or indeed ever, that we're going to get to the point where somebody just goes to the doctor and says, give me some pills to kill myself. And, and I... Yeah, well, who the fuck cares about your goddamn prognostications about what's possible in the future? I'd say that's a pile of goddamn rubbish. Absolute fucking rubbish. 
especially if the world starts getting darker and darker. We're not going to go back to the grapes of wrath, you know. People aren't going to be willing to work for a peach a day. All right, so there's going to be real fucking hard times coming, real hard licks, and people are, might come to the conclusion that, yeah, enough of this God-bothering bullshit. You know, God doesn't rule, God doesn't write legislation like he used to anymore. All right, it's all breaking down, and eventually this burial will break down, and people will have to concede that they have no rational right to tell people they have to think life is cool. But, I mean, I'm just so fucking sick of you goddamn... It'll never happen. It, I, know, I can tell it'll never fucking happen. Nah, 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 nah. Says you. As I sat round it over. Because of the nature of such feelings, um, you know, many of us will have these feelings at some point in our lives making you all the more duplicitously disgusting in my opinion because you you're going to tell me that when you're in that when you touch those feelings when you when you're there that you don't really understand what it's like and that the only thing that pulls you out of it usually is some sort of re-addiction some sort of hunger regenerated inside of you and that you can fully understand that yeah if that hunger never regenerated yeah, I really would find life insufferably stupid. Others have them consistently, and it is a you know it's a, it's a it feels like a necessity. It feels like a you know the only place to go is death. Well, get real. I mean, realistically, yeah, there are some circumstances where it's really the only solution to the problem. You're not going to have a cure for your you know, ninth stage prostate cancer or something. You're going to fucking die and you're going to do it painfully and ungracefully unless you fucking die sooner. And no doctor worth their salt would um, take someone's word for it without a bit of investigation. Yeah, well, whatever. Again, so it's got to be by somebody's standards, right? So the stand life, you're, you fuckers are arguing that life is just so fucking cool that we have to drag people along to play the game. That it's not good enough. I, I mean, I, I just would think if life was so great that the minimum standard would be that somebody could actually maintain an ability to pull up their hand and say, I want to live. I mean, if, the, if the somebody can't say that, then why the fuck do you need to change them into something else? Why the fuck do you need to do that? Ugh. It's pitiful. It's fucking pitiful. You got nothing, and yet you're just, all you're basically saying is, no, we got to get this guy re-addicted. We've got to get him back in the game. Why? Why? So you can torture him, that's all. But without some serious investigation. And, you know, otherwise, you would be killing people who just wanted to die because they were having a bad day. Well, who the fuck cares, realistically, if they have so weak an attachment to life that they can, on a daily basis, fly into excessive attachment and excessive uh, revulsion, then they probably shouldn't be alive. I mean, it, this is just kind of ludicrous. You're saying that, you know, this is like saying you're, you're a real Christian, but... You'll sin all over the place. You'll take the Lord's name in vain. You'll sleep with another man's wife. You'll steal candy from a baby. You'll break every fucking commandment. And then tell me you're still a believer. I mean, what a crock of shit. If you're that bad a goddamn life liver, or you're that bad of a Christian, then you don't deserve the title. You don't deserve to fucking goddamn live if you can't maintain enough enthusiasm to get through a little bit of a hard spot or a bad month. And I, and I don't think you would agree that that would be a good idea. Who the fuck cares? They're going to die anyway. You really don't understand how this thing works at all, do you? I mean, you really don't get it. All right? There's this qualitative thing. All right? And that's all there is. You have these stupid chain of experiences. And that's all there is. You're going to die anyway. One way or the other. You're going to die. All right? You don't avoid dying. All you do is last longer. 
And for what purpose? There's seven fucking billion human consciousnesses on this fucking idiotic planet. You think there's going to be some kind of horror because one or two of them bail out early? Oh, come on. Um, yeah, let's get the population under control, but that doesn't mean by killing people who are feeling a bit better. Oh, about. killing them. Yeah, we're killing them. Yeah, we're doing what they say they want. Whoa, yeah, that's murder. We did what they say they want. They took control of their life, they had autonomy over their life, and we killed them. I mean, what a crock of fucking shit. What if the human species, by genetics, only lived to be 40 years old? Uh, is, would your argument be that this was the fucking ob ob obscene tragedy of all goddamn time, unparalleled? Un how can we even measure the preposterous horror that nature has imposed? Because we only lived to be 40 years old, or 55 years old, let's say the number was. That was the genetic maximum. So, we, so every life had 20 years cut off of it. Oh, if nature murders those 20 years, it's okay. But if we give people the right to die and that kills those 20 years, that's not okay. If we let people do what they want with their own fucking life, it's a fucking tragedy to see. But if nature did it, it's okily dokily. Fucking duplicitous mush. It's off one day. Um, I'm going to have to get a in order to achieve your aim through the system. Oh, we just love this backseat driver. Jesus. Yeah, well, yeah, sorry. Why don't I, I I'm going to go ask a Christian to explain evolution to me. Why the fuck are you, you, know, you, you, you obviously have a, um, a, a counterpoint of view. So your advice is of no value here. You would have to put yourself through, even if it were to ever get to that point. And I think he's going to head in that direction. I think the right to assisted suicide for terminally ill is going to come eventually. But any shift from that, you know, any pushing that further forward is going to be hard won. Yeah, whatever. Again, th this is your prediction based on nothing, in my opinion. Okay, nothing you're articulating. I can make the counter-argument that that, that the progression of philosophical perception has been on a linear path, all right, and it's getting decidedly more and more dark. The more intelligent people get, the more they realize life is really a little bit fucked up, all right, and it's only the ignorant imbeciles, the lowest common denominator, the ones who buy um, shit sold by commercials, so they are represent on TV more, but intelligent life on this planet is not whistling your tune. It's whistling a lot more of a, eh, this thing is pretty fucked up tune. And it's only the ignorant jackass morons who are still waving the banner at the, at the fucking ball game. So possibly not even in your lifetime, however long your life goes on. But if it did, you would still have to endure endless psychological testing and, and so on in order to get it. Oh, right. Like I said, again, so, so human beings won't give people the dignity of being able to demonstrate I'm smarter than you. Right? I can't just demonstrate to you I know where I know what reality is better than you do. I can make a better argument for my reality, so why don't you just shove your pencil up your fucking ass, bitch? I mean, this is so fucking obnoxious that we need to be psychologically tested to earn the right to invest our own welfare in our own fucking judgment. And that that argument, in your opinion, is just too obtuse and strange for the rest of the human race to get. And then you're going to argue to me that there's something about this fucking human race to value. So you're telling me the most intelligent creature on earth is too stupid to recognize the rights of a goddamn individual all right, to have the control over their own destiny, their own opinion of what life means isn't their own anymore. They can't invest their own welfare in their own fucking judgment because you fucking babysitters are going to tell them what they're supposed to believe. And you're going to tell us that we're obnoxious, that, that we're somehow disgusting, that we're not doing our cause any fucking good. 
Fuck you. This is a disgusting argument. It'll never change. A very progressive, rational thing will not be possible on planet Earth, and yet you're going to defend the existence of the human fucking race. That is disgusting. Uh, unless you want the light, of course, which is your right if you wish to do that. So, wouldn't it be easier to acquire these things on the black market? If you really want to, you know, since you are physically capable. Oh, well, again, you just keep talking, acquire these things. What? Barbiturates. Okay, you know, your 50-50 chance, maybe. None of these things are certain, you know. You're going to keep just pretending that you can get this perfect little suicide kit on the black market. All right? And you can't. All right? You just can't. That's a, a crock of shit. I mean, the most famous book, Final Exit, was basically a description of a failed suicide. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, the guy was putting his wife out, uh, letting her die, and it wasn't all that fucking goddamn graceful. So there's nothing theoretically stopping you from doing that. Um, I mean, it's. It, we are entitled to buy every bit of technology we want, okay? That means the 78 cents worth of chemistry, right? The, the chemistry that puts you to sleep and then the chemistry that finishes you off. Um, and it's not that complicated, and that's what we have a right to. We, don't, we shouldn't have to do it in any kind of sledgehammer manner. We should be able to do it as, as, as precisely. You wouldn't want to have an academ academy um, on the black market, would you? Shall, shall we give you your surgery and your medical care on the black market so you can get the halfway solution, the half done, the half right? Should we do your surgery the half right way? I mean, obviously, if I had control over this fucking world, that would be your just desserts, in my opinion. If you're going to advocate that somebody else should settle for less, then I'm going to give you fucking less. So there's that. I mean, that's, I'm not just asking Helen Church, I'm asking anyone, because I'm genuinely interested... I'm also genuinely interested in, as to, to why the antinatalist philosophy in general, or the effortless philosophy, appears at least to give the impression that it's the only way for all of us. Well, well I'm sorry. Like I said, I can't prevent my existence by not having kids. That's not how I got here. I got here because some other asshole had kids. That's how this shit happens, okay? And all these animals that are getting eaten, I can't, I can only stop part of the problem. The other people are creating the problem. So you're telling me what? I should just think, I should just pretend it doesn't matter? I should just pretend that, oh yeah, I just not rape and therefore uh, I've done my job. That's my only obligation. I just say, I will not rape. And that's as far as I go. I don't pass any legislation against anybody else raping. I don't suggest other people shouldn't rape. I don't get in their business. I don't call them jackasses. Oh, God forbid, you should call a rapist a jackass. No, I'm going to call them jackasses. And that's, where, that's, where, that's all I'm doing so far, right? I'm just calling you motherfuckers, cunts, and jackasses. And you're all hysterical. Because I, that immediately alienates uh, many people who might be interested in supporting your personal cause. Um, you know, there's a lot. Well, realistically, if you know, if you know, if that's going to be the the factor that stops somebody from believing in a philosophy that basically says the whole game of life is fail, <coughs> then I don't know how to t how to explain to you how that just doesn't make any sense at all. I don't see how you can possibly rationalize a statement like that. All right, if we were arguing about what the, 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 the popular shoe color is going to be next year, well, maybe this point you're making about seducing somebody into a belief would make some sense. But we're really not. This is cut and dry, hard philosophy, and if somebody can't deal with a little bit of a bad attitude, then they're not ready for the philosophy in the first place. There are people out there who feel life is worth living, even with enormous well whatever that's not my problem their delusions and sicknesses and whack jobbedness and insanity is not my fucking problem i don't have to account for why retards like to eat their own poo do i do i really have to explain why retards like to eat their own poo 
No, I don't. I also don't have to explain why imbeciles um, are blissfully content in a shithole. All right, and that's what they are. They're imbeciles. They're assholes. They're idiots. Difficulty, and as far as I'm concerned, no one has the right to to, to choose on their behalf. Well, nobody's doing that, Pretentia. Who the fuck is doing that? No one's saying they have to die. They're saying you don't have a right to roll dice with somebody else's welfare. You don't like that. You don't have a right to be a creationist. You don't have a right to play fucking God, decide to roll dice for a new consciousness when you can't control the experiment, and you will create um, the liability of one million suicides. That's what you're going to create. All right, and it would be a lot more than that if we had real public access to the right to die. So you're talking about a lot of people, maybe at least one in ten, who don't find life all that fucking charming, who aren't all gung-ho to play the goddamn game, and you're just imposing on them. That, that, it's that fucking simple. You're imposing on them, and you don't have a fucking right to do it. Torture yourself. Perpetuate your own fucking existence. Leave me the fuck out of your sadistic, nonsensical, idiotic goddamn games. Leave me and all the other sentient creatures who aren't saying, do it. Um, though I, you know, I would support a genuine desire for someone to end their lives. So, you know, realistically... Oh, genuine. Uh, yeah. Well, whatever. Yeah. I, I, go show me the ungenuine one, please. Please. I'm curious. For all the conversation and the, um, pushing towards a particular outcome. How do you perceive it actually realistically, practically playing out in terms of the way we have the structure of the system as it stands now? You know, the structure of the system isn't going to exist, okay? The whole thing is going to crash, okay? And so there's going to be millions of poor people who just aren't going to be able to have babies anymore because no one's going to feed them anymore. All right, so that's going to be part of the solution right there. And the smart people already have quit making babies. So that's part of the solution right there. But yeah, you just get life a little bit darker, and this, this conversation is going to get a lot easier to have with people. And the futility and stupidity of, this, of just perpetuating this for the sake of perpetuation is stupid. Until somebody can make a rational argument about how this actually accomplishes something besides satisfying needs that didn't need to exist, 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 satisfying needs that didn't need to exist. Until you can do that, okay, yeah, this is a viable philosophy. Somebody put, I don't, even, I don't even know if they're, they're associated with Gary, I, I know that they're associated with Gary in one way or another, but uh, somebody who put the video on, which was a mirror of some, somebody talking about um, that uh, death, the attitude to death needs to change, and I absolutely agree with that. Um, but death causes pain for those who are left behind. Um, whether or not you want it to, it does. And that was kind of implied in that video. Well, it doesn't really matter, does it? I, I, I mean, the, the grief is inevitable anyway, okay? It's somebody's going to die first, somebody's going to die second. What's, what's the difference who does which? So I should live so I can watch people die that I care about? The longer I live, the more likely somebody else I care about, I'm going to have to wait, watch them die. So it's another incentive to get the fuck out first, because then I don't have to watch it anymore. I don't have to see another cat die. I don't have to see another human die. I don't have to watch it. I don't have to feel it. I don't have to go through it. So you're making my argument for me. No, 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 no. Grieving can be just di dismissed. Um, because, because if we had a healthier attitude to death, then it wouldn't happen. Well, actually, that's not entirely true. Well, I think it is entirely true, to tell you the truth. I think it's, in, it preposter it's so true, it's, it's preposterously um, um, imbecilic that this truth is not even, even for a moment contemplated by people, because it's a big, giant truth. We are born into propaganda. 
The entire life generation motivation mechanism is instilled in us through propaganda, through fairy tales, through, oh, come on, buck up, be like the rest of be a courage, be strong, be bad, all this crap. And if we just started off a kid right from the start with the goddamn truth and said it's all a goddamn bullshit in your head, you're just a selfish little machine, you got little wheels turning trying to figure out what your advantage is, this is how we play the game, this is all kind of stupid. All right, yeah, they wouldn't be have any of this grief crap or any of this other kind of crap because they would realize that these are all emotional goddamn mechanisms that are only intended to keep us running in a stupid wheel, chasing a fake piece of cheese uh, at a horrendously disgusting, obscenely expensive cost. Um, I have a very pragmatic attitude to death, and I have had, experienced a lot of death. Some of you will know all those well, whatever. You've experienced a lot of death. I mean, until you've done it, I don't know if you can really, if you're qualified to say what it's like to have, you know, five years of um, debilitation and then finally <laughs> gasp your last gasp and tell me about how wonderful it is. I mean, it's just, uh, whatever. I don't even want to get onto that subject because, frankly, these people romanticizing death. I mean, every fucking one I've seen has been has been brutally um, um, unpleasant, um, uh, and uh, if if they, if if they if, if they weren't lucky enough to lose their mind before the final days, um, regardless, it was still a physically ugly thing. And then if they didn't lose their mind, it's even more horrendous because then they had to actually go through the experience of suffocating. Real fun that looked like. You watch my videos here uh, in this particular channel, um, well, no, and uh, I'm not frightened of it uh, at all. Yeah, whatever. Well, that's your fucking wacky business, in my opinion, okay? If you're not frightened of dying, of the dying process, then, in my opinion, you're fucking, you're just, you're fucking crazy. You're just fucking crazy. Other than perhaps the method of my own death. Um, yeah, well, that's really the subject, isn't it? I mean, being dead. Well, who the fuck is going to be afraid of being dead? <laughs> I mean, come on. Nothing? Oh, I'm afraid of nothing. Well, that would... Doesn't that sound right on the, on the face of it stupid? I'm afraid of nothing. No, I'm not afraid of nothing. I'm afraid of something. Suffering. <sighs> fuck. But... Uh... The pain that one feels at the loss of somebody is it, it is written in really. It's it's a detachment. It's a detaching. Um, it, it's um, it's a it's not written into anything, to tell you the truth. It really isn't. I mean, my, you know, it really isn't. I mean, it's all about context, it's all about circumstances, and it's all about, obviously, you can rationalize your way out of an awful lot of grief by just recognizing the uncontrollability of it and the inevitability of it. So you can wipe out an awful lot of grief by just acknowledging that, well, if, they didn't, if that didn't happen, fucking goddamn worse was going to happen. So you can almost turn it into a good thing. You can turn over, you can turn getting run over by a goddamn bus into a good thing because all you have to do is write down on a piece of paper the likelihood that they might have had, you know, four heart surgeries and 79 this is and the wife would have divorced them and all this other shit that was going to happen to them if they didn't get hit by a goddamn bus. Natural process. So if you have loved ones and you end your life, you will. Cause them suffering. Well, again, this, the, like the, 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 this little well, guilt game, is, this little guilt game is just a big pile of goddamn shit, too. Again, I did not have anybody. All right, I don't have any of these obligations. You want to create obligations in your life? Well, that's your fucking goddamn business. But I have none. I have signed no contracts with anybody saying I'm here forever. All right, there's no such goddamn contract. All right, they they fucking imposed on me. I didn't impose anything on them. All right, so tough fucking God. Anybody who's going to miss me, well, tough goddamn shit. Whether legislation comes in which allows people who are distressed with their lives to, to end them. Oh, distressed with their lives, yeah. Th who are fucking smart enough to figure out we are living an idiotic lie. This is a replicating molecule. This is not fucking 
singularity bullshit. This is, we're not doing anything. There's nothing being accomplished here except gladiator fucking war. All right, so again, glorify it as something else. Explain to me what it is if it isn't gladiator war. What else is it then? What is your mumbo fucking jumbo? What is your religious woo woo alternative explanation for what the fuck we are? Or not. Um, unless you are completely isolated with no one who cares for you at all, your death will have an impact. Oh, yeah, well, whatever. It's going to have an impact whenever it takes place, isn't it? And if you take us, and if you die slowly, um, you know, 70 years later, or 30 years later, or 20 years, whatever the number would be, or five years later, uh, then people have to watch you slowly die. Is that going to be even more fun? That's, that's the beneficial, nice thing to do. Yes, to do them a favor. Wait to die naturally and slowly so they can really enjoy the, 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 the horror of watching you suffer. Yeah, because they like watching people suffer because you're sadistic lunatics. Impact whenever it happens. Um, I don't think there's any escaping from that. And even people who are kind of pretty open about it, like me, will experience, um, you know, extreme pain. I mean, some of the grieving I went that went on for my mother went on while she was still alive because we are both. You know, a lot of her life was about death, helping people die. Um, so you know, it, it, it was theoretically the best conditions you could have, but there was still a lot of pain associated with it. Um, so you know. Well, again, and then. <laughs> Why? Why should we even have a rational conversation? I have no. I have no interest in guilting anybody into doing a goddamn thing for me. All right, especially living when they don't want to live. That's the last motherfucking thing I put on my list of to do things. Yeah, guilt somebody into living. Yeah, that's the goddamn last thing on the goddamn fucking list. So if somebody needs me to say, I promise. Okay. I'll have only good thoughts about your life and about who you were. I'll say those words and I'll goddamn mean it. Because that's more of a tribute and that's more of a sincere relationship than this goddamn griefing bullshit. Okay, I'm not going to grieve because somebody else is in pain and they commit suicide. Alright, that is a time, that, that is something to goddamn motherfucking celebrate. Okay, they're fucking free from a sadistic, idiotic goddamn game. How do you feel about that? Do you see yourself as connected with um, with those people who care for you? Or, or is their suffering, if you do decide to die, of no consequence? Well, it's of no consequence because, you know why? Because obviously my suffering means nothing to them, right? If, if somebody is actually going to grieve because I killed myself, all right, because I was miserable, and they find that unacceptable somehow. Somehow that's the wrong solution. The end of my pain is something to grieve. Okay, then I guess they're pretty fucking insensitive then, right? They wanted me to stay, hang around and suffer some more. Put in a couple more decades, Gary. You know, put, you know, shove your fucking card in the fucking goddamn time stamper. Uh, you know, uh, fuck you. Alright, I've been, I've been working in this fucking trench um, long enough, I deserve a fucking vacation, a permanent vacation. And if anybody who doesn't understand that, fuck them is my opinion to them. That's what I say to them. I'm sorry you care for me because fuck you, you suck. If you can't see that, that I deserve, okay, respect. If you can't see that, if you can't respect me and respect my decision, then fuck your love, fuck your consideration, fuck your friendship, fuck any part of you that's connected to me. Because if you can't see that that's who I fucking am, fuck you. To you. Um, I'm not suggesting you should stay to stop them from suffering. Oh, no, that's not what you're suggesting at all. <laughs> oh, come on. But many people seem to talk about it, it in terms of it's an end to suffering, but only for you, really. Uh
Oh, well, it's again, that's just a crock of shit. Like I said, if you're going to put the two on the same scale and say that the, the poor loved one is, is, you know, they just can't live without the other person, well, that kind of dependency is already corrupt. I mean, realistically. You, you cannot obligate people to be your food. You can't live off of them like a parasite. So that's just bullshit, too. So, yeah. Respectful, interested questions that I would be really interested in um, having some answers to, if, if any of you have got any. Thanks. Yeah, well, I'd like you to answer the fundamental question, okay? I've given you the Frankenstein thought experiment. I can give you the roller coaster one, okay? This is the this is the uh, metaphor for life. Either either say it's not a metaphor for life; it has nothing to do with the real uh, world situation, or answer the fucking question. But the the rule is is that everybody has to go, okay? There's five people. Whatever they decide to do, they all have to do it, okay? There's no to everybody gets to do their own flavor thing. No, it's only one flavor, it's only one choice, it's all or fucking nothing. There's a winner and a loser, period. All right, and the scenario is is some people want to go on this roller coaster ride. They don't need to go on it. It's not going they're not going to die if they don't go on it. They just want to go on it. And one of them is going to make them sick and it might even kill them. Okay? Now, do the four have a right to impose on the one? Is there ethical reason to do it? Is there some kind of rational conversation they can have explaining why they're going to do that, why it would be worth it to do that? If they aren't focused on the fact that let's try to figure out some other thing to do with ourselves, then, then what else is there? So, the, But that's the scenario. So you can either keep making victims, you can either keep imposing and forcing people into the trunk and forcing them to play your fucking game, or you can say, no, it's unethical to force it. All right. It doesn't matter if 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 nine out of ten women. I'll give you another metaphor. It's woman related. If nine out of ten women enjoyed rape, okay, even though they said no and they pretended like they were totally against it, it was proven fact that nine out of ten of them really loved it. Would we still have a right to legalize rape? Would it be legal? Would it be reasonable to legalize rape, even though one of those victims was real still? One of them was still a real victim. Would it be okay to legalize rape? I don't think you think it would. So answer my questions, thank you very much, which you'll avoid because you'll say, oh, he's too angry, or he's too hostile, or he bit, bit, Right, because I give a fuck about all this shit that you people just step over every day. You hear the crunch, crunch, crunch of the skulls, and you just keep on stepping through it like it doesn't mean anything, like nature is balanced. I'm sure it's balanced. I'm sure. Was six million Jews just the right number of Jews? How many Jews would I have to kill in a Holocaust for you to say, no mas? How many? Just, uh, you know, just curious. How many Jews would I have to kill in the Holocaust for you to say, oh yeah, humans are too, way too stupid? Yeah, you won't answer the question.